Uh, today, we're glad to have Dr. Brian Batson, CEO and internal medicine physician at Hattiesburg Clinic, who has been so instrumental in leading our community's response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Dr. Batson, uh, thanks for joining us. Good morning, Mayor. All right. So I want to go just jump right into it. I know right now the big, the big news that we're seeing is Omicron, of course, during July, August, September, we were in the throes of Delta. Uh, it was incredibly contagious, but also very deadly. What's different about Omicron? First of all, how prevalent are we seeing that in our community? But also, what's different about the Omicron variant than we saw with the Delta variant? Sure. Um, Omicron has become a, a very uh, present factor over the last few weeks. Um, just a few weeks ago, the CDC monitored um, infections across the country, and Delta was the predominant variant. A week later, Omicron became the predominant variant across the country, which just is a reflection of how quickly this variant has spread. So we are absolutely seeing it here in the Pine Belt as well. Um, it is more contagious. And I think the, the rapid spread also is a reflection of just that people have been gathering more. Um, and, and so some of the rapid rise is, is just a, a, a function of, of gatherings. Um, as far as the differences between it and Delta, right now uh, we're still learning a lot about Omicron. Um, and we're relying on Europe and the UK to, to extrapolate some of that data, but it does appear to be a um, slightly less um, severe infection than Delta. That said, uh, we are still seeing a rise in hospitalizations across the country, and you may have seen the information coming out of New York specifically about pediatric hospitalizations being on the rise, especially in those uh, children who are not old enough to be vaccinated yet. And I mean, just in our own local community, we 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 always kind of watch these daily reports of infections. And just just two weeks ago, on December fourteenth, uh, I think the seven day average in Forest County was just over eight, and about five and a half in Lamar County. Uh, we had about two hundred thirty seven people within fourteen days. That was our inside fourteen day number. Well, fast forward two weeks later, that that you know that that fourteen day uh, inside fourteen day number is now from two twenty to five hundred. Uh, we've seen the seven-day average in Forest County jump to over 25, uh, in Lamar County jump to over 23. Uh, so far, we, we haven't seen the rate, the rapid growth in hospitalizations uh, in our community that we saw with Delta. However, we are seeing, you know, it's increased by about 10 since last week, uh, understanding that, that we're seeing younger people in the hospital. I guess that goes to, is the vaccine still an effective way to prevent serious illness uh, when it comes to Omicron? Yes, um, and again, I, I rely somewhat on the, the data out of England because they have seen more you know, cases and are a little bit further down in the timeline of understanding Omicron than we are, and, and they are not able actually to report out as, uh, as to the effectiveness of vex the boosters regarding severe hospitalizations because, or severe illness and hospitalizations because there have not been a significant number of those. That's encouraging. Uh, on the flip side, because it is um, a, a much milder infection, and in many patients even completely asymptomatic, that also contributes to the rapid spread. Um, when people aren't uh, feeling poorly, they're more likely to continue in their daily activities and, and spread the infection. But you're absolutely right. Thankfully, we locally have not seen a significant spike in hospitalizations or severe Ill illness. Um, it does appear that vaccination continues to be a, an effective way to reduce the severity of disease, especially booster vaccines. And we saw just, again, locally, like 17 or 18 at Forest General yesterday, only two have been vaccinated, so that it seems to be holding that kind of trend. And, and you, you mentioned asymptomatic spread. Um, with the development of, of in-home test kits, and, and I know that our family uh, tested before we gathered over, over Christmas break, are those reliable? Would you recommend them uh, to people who may be feeling a little, you know, not so great or have been around people who were exposed? Yes, in-home test kits are a very effective way to do surveillance um, in, in your home and, and in, in your you know, family to um, prevent that asymptomatic spread or, or that, that those symptoms that just seem very, very mild. Many patients with Omicron say they just feel like they have a little head cold or maybe just a mild case of the flu, even more so than what we're seeing with the other variants. In-home test kits are reliable. There are many that are FDA approved. 
they're a little difficult to find right now. Um, President Biden announced uh, last week, I believe, or maybe the week before, the federal program that will be coming soon to distribute home test kits free to people who want them. Because of that, there's been a little bit of a shortage in the availability of home test kits, but I do recommend uh, people seek those out when they become available again. If, if you can't find them now, they, they will hopefully become available, but they're they are an excellent way to uh, continue to monitor, monitor for this. And part of our you know, ongoing strategy and fighting this in our own community and trying to get back to some sense of normalcy is, is the idea of staying vaccinated. And, you know, talk about booster shots. I mean, now Forest County's finally gotten its, its that first dose vaccines to 44%, 40% fully vaccinated. Lamar County's doing almost 60% fully vaccinated now. Uh, how important, though, with this big push for getting the two doses, how important and when should people go back and get that booster shot? Yes, uh, boosters have, have proven to be a really, really important um, piece of, uh, of the fight, if you will, in, especially with Omicron. Uh, booster doses are very much needed in order to continue to keep the infection rate as low as possible. And as you mentioned, to keep severe infection down. Boosters appear to be the best way to go about that. The primary series, either the two doses with Pfizer and Moderna or the single dose with J and J, the the effectiveness of those vaccines appears to, to wane significantly um, after six months for the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. So getting a booster is a, is a really important step in continuing in our, in our fight against um, coronavirus, especially against uh, Omicron. So if someone is past the six month mark of their second dose with Pfizer and Moderna, what's, what's the timeline if you got a J&J &J shot? The two months of, uh, after J&J. &J. Also, I think many people have seen the, the mix and match theory that um, patients who have received Pfizer, Moderna, or J&J &J can get either Pfizer or, or Moderna as their booster. Um, some have uh, contended that that's a more effective way at, at preventing um, the Om Omicron variant, and there is some data to support that. So there's a lot of flexibility. The good news here is there's a lot of flexibility in which boosters um, a person can get. You don't have to stay with the primary series that you receive for your first shots. All right, so obviously this weekend we, we have New Year's Eve and it's a time where last year we didn't gather this year. People are looking forward to gathering. Uh, what's your advice? Uh, understanding the city itself is, is sponsoring a, a, a big downtown uh, New Year's Eve celebration. What's the practical advice that we should give people as they head downtown or to wherever they're going for New Year's Eve? Yeah, I, I think it's it's a similar message to what we've had, um, you know, over the last several months. It is as people gather, please be be responsible, be mindful of our neighbors and and other people that are be gathering with us. Um, if you haven't gotten your booster, please do so. Uh, I, I think that's the probably the most important message that we can ask people to consider as they talk about gathering uh, this weekend and in the next few weeks. And and also, if you're in in, in closed you know, circumstances, consider a mask again. I mean, it, it is certainly a personal choice, um, but I think just being responsible and being mindful of what's going on right now in the community with the spread that, that we're seeing. Well, it might be cold outside too, so mask actually helps keep. Cold well. <laughs> so, well, look, Dr. Batson, thank you for for all you do, all you do at the clinic. Thanks for just being on the front line of this, and uh, and we appreciate all the the answers to these questions. And uh, if anyone else has questions for uh, Dr. Batson, you can post those on our Facebook uh, in the comments section of this post, and we will try to get those answered for you. But Dr. Batson, thanks again, and and happy New Year. Thanks, Mayor. You as well.